when I talk about filming, a lot of people on this channel just immediately think about the Netflix standard film, the fictitious film. Yes, while that is part of filming, I want us to look at filming from another direction now. Look at filming as professionally taking the stories of your own life or telling the stories of your own life with the use of a camera. For example, if you're a pastor and you want to film a sermon, if you're a student and you have to film an assignment, if you are a YouTuber and you have to film a YouTube lecture or vlog, if you are a technician and you need to film how the process with which you are doing the technical thing you are doing, then you are a filmmaker too. So in addition to the filmmakers who are doing Netflix films who are on this channel, you are also on this channel as a filmmaker. Anybody who ever nests the intention or the desire to become a filmmaker first picks up a camera. It may be a professional camera or a phone camera. And when you pick up the camera, the first challenge you are always going to face is setting the exposure right. I am going to be walking you down the road of understanding exposure so that you can capture the most perfect images with your phone or your camera. Let's roll the intro. Now, if this is your first time on my channel, I'm called Director BB has prophesied. I receive and it. I am going to be giving you a lecture on exposure. So, I want you to stay glued to your screen. Hit the subscribe button. Like, comment. Anything that you want me to do videos on, give me a comment. And I'm going to come up with videos explaining whatever you may want to understand in your journey of filmmaking either for self or for fiction today we are going to be studying about exposure what is exposure exposure is how much light that hits your camera sensor to ensure that you have a bright image bright image which preserves your areas of highlight and your areas of shadow now in order to control the exposure of your camera there are three mechanisms that you need to understand them and understand them well these three mechanisms are the aperture the shutter speed and the iso or iso looking at the aperture the aperture is one mechanism that determines how much light is going to hit your sensor by how wide it opens or how small it closes so the aperture opens wide to ensure that light hits your sensor and it closes to prevent light from hitting your sensor and when light hits your sensor what happens your image becomes bright and when it closes and prevents light from hitting your sensor what happens your image becomes dark aperture is being controlled from by f stops from f1 f2 it, it really depends on your lens or the kind of camera for those of you who are using the most recent iphone 15 pro max <laughs> probably the the the, the, the um, f stop of that camera will be from f1 for those of you who are using very professional lenses it's going to be ranging from f1 or f1.4 or F, or f2 but most mostly it's f2 and f5 like i said it's dependent on your lens sorry how professional your your lens is so um how wide or how close your aperture is is 
dependent on the f stop so the lower the f stop is how wide your aperture is while the higher the f stop is how close your aperture is what do i mean i mean that if your if your f stop is f22 it means that your aperture is preventing light from hitting your sensor while if it is f2 or f1.4 or f1 it means it has open very wide permitting light to hit your sensor hence making your picture bright the next mechanism we are going to look at is the shutter speed the shutter speed is how fast or the amount of time it takes for your shutter to close and open to take a picture because in order to take a picture your shutter has to close and open so the shutter speed is the amount of time the shutter takes to close and open to take a picture shutter is like a curtain let me use normal um, explanations that you can understand shutter is like a curtain that opens and closes to ensure that a picture is being taken and now the faster the faster your shutter opens and close is how much it prevents light from hitting your sensor because it's fast before light wants to enter is how much it prevents the light now the slower your sensor opens and uh, um, closes to take a picture is how much light hits your sensor so if your if your sensor opens and closes as slow the brighter your picture why if your sensor opens and closes fast your picture is going to be darker because there's going to be less light that's going to hit your sensor now shutter speed is calculated in fractions of seconds in order to understand this it's a little bit um, a little bit complex it's like you need to understand mathematics <laughs> before you understand the fractions of seconds but it's not that challenging let me give you a simple way with which you can understand these fractions of a second and the fractions of a section of a second ranges from one on two up until one on eight thousand so try representing a second in a circle of eight thousand pieces when your um, the digit of your shutter shows that you have placed your shutter digit on one on eight thousand it means the speed with which your shutter opens and closes is like one piece of that eight thousand of the eight thousand pieces represented in a circle of a second it means that it's not up to a second it's like a second divided into eight thousand times and uh, 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 that closes to take a picture so you can imagine how fast that is i don't know if you understand it. if you don't understand just write in the comment sections below so that i can look for another way or I probably i can drop notes in the comment section that you are going to read it uh, in a slow pace to have an understanding but what i mean is that if it is eight thousand of a second that is one on eight thousand it means that one piece of a second divided eight thousand times is how fast your shutter closes and opens so um the faster it closes and opens is how dark your picture is going to be why the slower it opens and closes is how bright your image is going to be now there are going to be pitfalls for um going too low or too high we are going to death into that now the next mechanism that we should look at is the iso now the iso is the artificial boosting of the sensitivity of the sensor to accommodate light and iso the the uh, the lower the iso the darker your picture is and the higher the iso the brighter your picture is now note in these three variables with the iso the lower the iso is the darker the image and the higher the iso is the brighter the image while in f-stop the lower the f-stop is the brighter your image and the higher the f-stop is the darker your image same with shutter the lower the shutter speed is 
the brighter your image and the higher the shutter speed fraction is the um anyway with those fractions it is not really one one of eight thousand is not really even in mathematical terms one on eight thousand is not really higher than one on two so um um we cannot really say that as a fact now coming back to iso now um, iso ranges from 50 up until 12,800 depending on the camera so now all of these three variables or all of these three, me three mechanisms that determine exposure of your image have their downsides so you may decide that oh i want to take down all the aperture to be uh, f1 so that my image is going to be very bright and then i will not care about the iso or i will not care about the shutter there are some there are some pitfalls that you go if you exaggerate the use or if you do not understand how to co-use these variables or if you don't understand the situations where you should use which mechanism more or um, which other more so in the next video that i'm going to put out i'm going to go in depth on each of these mechanisms and tell you situations which is proper for you to use them more or less and the downside of using each of the mechanisms more or each of them less if you stayed until the end of this until the end of this video i'm very happy that you stayed with me and i'm encouraging you to subscribe on, my, on, on this youtube channel drop comments below Anything that is bothering you, if it concerns this video, I'm going to still give further clarifications in the comment section below. And if you want another video that is going to further explain something or another concept about filming that you do not understand, then I'm going to make a video for you. So until then, keep subscribing, keep sharing, keep commenting, keep liking, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.